All right. As investors, let's get to the money angle of this, the investment angle. As they struggle to get ahead of a slowing global economy and tumultuous financial markets, our next guest says this is all just the opening act to a financial catastrophe that will make 2008 pale in comparison, David. Mark Faber is editor and publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report. He joins us now on the phone from Hong Kong in a Fox Business exclusive. Mark, great to talk to you. Uh, You say that a big one is coming. How big and what is it going to be? Well, it's going to be huge, but we don't know when because the central banks around the world, they're going to print and print and print, whereby I have to say that today's decision of Mr. Bernanke not to expand the balance sheet is the best decision I've seen for a long time from a U.S central banker. Interesting. And people say the stock market went down. Wow, I lost some money. But the dollar went up. Yeah. We are international investors. We want to see a strong dollar. Never mind the stock market. And that's what happened. We got a strong dollar in the wake of it, even though the market fell down. But here's a three-year picture. We're way up off the three-year lows. But you say we will revisit and see an even worse move to the downside. What would be the catalyst? And I don't know if you just heard the former Fed official Fred Mishkin here, but he said, and I quote, the Greeks just can't pay the goddamn money back. And and Europe is a huge issue. Look, Fred, I like him. He's a nice man. He's an economist. He's right. The Greeks, they cannot pay. But lots of people in the U.S. can't pay either. Most banks worldwide are bankrupt, bankrupt, because if they had to mark to the market their assets, there would be no capital left. And that's reflected in the new lows of bank stocks today. A lot of banks have uh, made new lows, but the market somewhere, somehow is going down because it's discounting a very bad event. I don't know what the event is. I think the world is caught in a U.S. where, as Fred mentioned, there is not a lot of inflationary pressures on consumer goods, but energy prices up, food prices up. Now, with zero interest rates, you know what will happen to your insurance premiums? They'll go up dramatically because the insurance can't earn any money on their investment. So there All right. Will well, Mark, Mark, let me just Mark, let me just ask you about the interventions, because despite the fact that governments have run out of money, they continually try to intervene in preventing disasters, whether it's in the housing market or the banking market or whatever. What happens if there's enough political pressure on those governments? It's happening here in the United States, not so much overseas, but it's beginning to overseas as well. If the, the public demands that they stop with the bailouts, what will happen then? Well, the best would be that there would be no government intervention. But it's gone so far that to reduce the intervention and to lower the deficit will cause temporary pain. And believe me, we're not talking about economics here. We're talking about an election. And Mr. Obama, he wants to get re-elected. And he'll do anything to get the vote. And to get votes, you have to hand out things. So for the next, say, 12 months on the fiscal restraint, nothing will happen. Afterwards, who knows? If he's re-elected, it will continue handouts, handouts, handouts. Mm -hmm. If he's not re-elected, who knows what the next president will do. Mark Faber, live from Hong Kong, we thank you so 